written in language, folks, that even Democrats can understand. <laughs> um, and so, so let's start from the very beginning. You say that the, this is the greatest threat facing America, and I think this is a hard sell for a lot of even Republicans yes. and conservatives who have been told that ISIS is the greatest threat or Russia is the greatest yes. threat or taxation or social policy. Why is immigration the greatest threat facing the country? Well, first of all, I'm assuming a lot of you are, are Republicans or conservative Democrats, and it just it feels like we have been overwhelmed with wave after wave of loss. Obama is elected. Obama is re-elected. There is Obamacare being upheld twice by the Supreme Court. Gay marriage voiced on us. Um, the, um, Obama withdraws our troops from Iraq. I am a ferocious supporter of the Iraq War. Um, and I can't believe Obama comes in and gives away our victory. I, I mean, I hate him for that more than I hate him for Obamacare. Um, None of this had to happen. It is all the result of Teddy Kennedy's 1965 Immigration Act. Uh, without the 1965 Immigration Act, the post-1970 immigrants, very different from the pre-1970 immigrants. So I don't want to hear any weeping about your grandfathers. Um, but we'll get back to that. Uh, the post-1970 immigrants are what got Obama elected in the first place. He could not have been elected without the post-1970 immigrants who have been voting 8-2 to two for the Democrats. Without Without the 1965 Immigration Act, Romney would have won a bigger victory against Obama than Reagan did against Carter in 1980. I think probably some of you were as surprised as I was the day at 3 a.m. election night. Huh, I thought he was going to win that. We'll get used to saying that a lot more. Huh. I thought we were going to win that election. What happened to that state? Um, how did we get Obamacare? Well, Al Franken was the 51st vote for Obamacare. Uh, how did he win? Well, he, he cheated. But he wouldn't have been within, within shouting distance of cheating but for 100,000 Somalis now living in Minnesota who were instructed by the first Muslim congressman, Keith Ellison, you must all vote for Al Franken. Uh, without Obama as president, we wouldn't have Sonia Sotomayor we wouldn't, on the Supreme Court. We wouldn't have Elena Kagan on the Supreme Court. All these losses didn't have to happen. So whatever you think the most important issue is, it's not. I mean, even now, I get this sense, and, and from talking to people, you run into d Democrats, and especially working class Democrats, saying, you know, I have had it. This, the Democrats have gone too far, this hysteria over, you know, taking down Confederate soldiers and changing the name of the Jefferson Monument and, and the fake rape cases and Obamacare and gay marriage. That's it. I'm voting Republican. Hellfire will rain down on these Democrats. Well, that might well happen, but Americans are about to be over, outvoted by other voters, by foreign voters the Democrats have brought in. Now, that's only talking about the political aspect, because I'm assuming this audience <laughs> cares about the political aspect, and why should you care about this issue more than anything else, certainly if you're a Republican. But it's more than that. In order to bring in voters who will vote, eight to two for the Democrats, we're bringing in extremely primitive cultures. And this is most of what my book covers. Um, to, in order to make it short and very readable, it's 100 pages of footnotes, it's way shorter than it looks. You've got to read it. Um, I, I ended up cutting 200 pages a month before we went to press. But what I wanted to keep in, and I thought it was important to keep in, um, were gang rape, child rape, incest rape. We are bringing in peasant cultures. It happens that Latin America is the peasant culture closest to us, but that's not the only one. Oh, no, no, this, these are very common behaviors, as are driving drunk and dumping your crap on the ground. I mean, it is changing our culture in ways that the rich don't experience. It's never coming to Knob Hill in San Francisco. It's probably not coming to Newport Beach. It's not coming to Park Avenue. No, they just get the cheap maids. While Americans are the ones bearing the cost, not only in terms of taxes, in their schools being overburdened, in massive you know, school lunch programs, the hospitals are going bankrupt. No, it's ordinary Americans who are paying the cost, and most of all, I would add here, are African Americans. I mean, has, has anybody in the media checked with, or as I've recently been instructed to stop saying African Americans, American blacks? Because that is what I mean. I'm not talking about a guy whose father is a Kenyan. Um, American blacks. 